Faith has an overcoming power. Hebrews says, now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draws back, how many of you know it's not time to draw back, it's time to press in? important you get a direction from God. Uh, this year I, I've shared with you a number of times that God has told me stay the course and how many have times that's really helped me and, and work through something. But God gave me a word for next year already. How many of you know you need a word from God for next year? Amen. So many people let the new year come and we're supposed to give God our past for his future but how many of you would agree that you need a touch from God yourself? Amen. And you can't rely on mine. You have to get one for yourself. Amen. And I'm going to be sharing part of that next week. But, you know, God is telling me I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. How many of you know, I don't know what lies ahead, but God does. How many of you know God knows the beginning from the end? <coughs> but we need a word. And I know so many people that they're living on someone else's word. How about getting a word for yourself? Just say hallelujah. hallelujah. <laughs> this morning I want to complete this. I started off on authority. And we talked about people under authority know the power of authority. But I also began uh, two weeks ago about great faith. How many of you know Jesus said when he's seen this kind of authority, he said, not such great faith, it says in Matthew 8, have I seen even in Israel. Everybody say faith. How many of you know that every Christian, no matter where you are, you need to understand the power that when you were born again, you were born again to walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. According to the word of God, faith is in you. It's not something that's going to come to you. It is in you in a certain measure. And what I talked about, remember, if you remember, is Having great faith, Jesus seen this great faith in this man, but he also seen it in a number of other situations in his life. But every Christian has a measure of faith. Everybody say every. every. It says, For I say through the grace of God given to me to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to be sober as God has dealt to everyone a measure of faith. Everybody say measure of, measure of faith. So the first thing I talked about is if we're going to have a measure of faith, there's three kinds of faith in the Bible. There's great faith, there's little faith, and then there's weak faith. The question is, it's in the Bible, but what kind of faith do we have? Because you make the choice of what kind of faith you want to walk in. You want to walk in, thank you for that amen. amen. How many of you know, I believe God has created all of us to walk in great faith. Yes. And if we have little faith, then how many of you know, we need to make that great faith. And if we have weak faith, we need to make that strong faith. Because every Christian has a measure of faith. But how many of you know, those three kinds of faith are not the only thing about faith. It's also impossible to please God without faith. And this is where I left off, basically, is that we can't even please... How many of you want to please God? Amen. I believe everybody in here desires to please God. Or you wouldn't be here this morning. Nobody would get up before 9 o'clock on Sunday and come to church if you didn't want to please God. Amen? amen. And so if that's the case, I said amen. amen. So if that's the case, how many of you know if we all want to please God, then one thing we know, we cannot please God without faith. Because this is what the word says in Matthew 15. Then Jesus answered and said to them, O woman of great faith, let it be done to you. And he says to them that you are healed from this very hour. Your servant is healed. But he goes on and he says these words in Hebrews 11:6. But without faith, it's impossible to please God. How many of you know, he doesn't use the word impossible very often. 
in the New Testament. But how many of you know he said, it's not only hard, it's not only a mistake, it is impossible to please God without faith. In other words, if we're going to walk anything in this life, how many of you know we've got to walk by faith and not by sight? Can somebody say amen in here? Because how many of you know some of the things you're watching right now are not going to be the same next year? In fact, they might not even be the same this next week. But how many of you know we got to believe for them to change today? Amen. I said we got to believe for them to change today. Amen. And so we've got to begin to understand that it goes on to say this word, for it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is. Everybody say that he is. He is. And that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. How many of you know there is a requirement there and that is he is a rewarder, but he's not only just a rewarder to anybody, but he's a rewarder to those that diligently seek him. Everybody say, I have to want, have to, want to, seek God. to seek God. In other words, the power of that is not in the impossibility of it. The power of that is in, do I desire to walk by faith? Right. All you got to do is desire to walk by faith and you begin to please God. Right. And that anointing. And so... If that's the case, then we need to begin to understand if it's impossible to please God, what does God see in our lives? What does the Word say? How many of you know that I, I said in the beginning of this that all Christians were born to walk by faith? Habakkuk says, Behold the proud, his soul is not right in him, but the just shall live by faith. Yeah. Everybody say, the just. The just. He goes on in the New Testament in 1 John and he says, for whoever is born of God overcomes the world. Just look at your neighbor and say, I'm an overcomer when I don't feel like it. Just say that. I'm an overcomer when I don't feel like that. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, our faith. If you are even going to overcome the world in which we live, you're not going to do it just because you're a Christian. You're going to do it because you walk by faith and not by sight. Can somebody say amen in this house? For whatever is born of God, are you born of God? Have you came to the knowledge of Jesus? If you are, then that anointing, that blessing, that goodness already lives in you. Man, I'm excited for the first service. I'm about ready to run the aisle because I'm going to tell you when you learn about faith... It makes such a difference in your life because you don't live by circumstance, situation, or events that happen in your life. You live by the power, knowing that you can overcome that stuff by the power of God. And not only by that, he said, and we will overcome that, the world, by our faith. Faith has an overcoming power. Hebrews says, now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draws back, if any man draws back, my soul shall no wise please him or be pleased with him. How many of you know it's not time to draw back, it's time to press in? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Can I tell you that what happens and why faith is, if you will, seen by God, the power and the anointing of God, is because most of the time when circumstances come our way, we have a tendency to draw back from God instead of run to God. I said we have a chance to draw back. That's most of the time what happens. I mean, there's two kinds of people that I've always found in life that are not consistent with God. And those kinds of people are honestly, when something goes wrong, you see them in church. And then others are, when something goes wrong, you don't see them in church. Don't shout me down here. I mean, you know, there's really two kinds of people that are not consistent in their faith. And what happens is both of those people live by the circumstances. When everything's going good, they serve God. The moment something starts happening, they start leaning on themselves in the arm of the flesh. And they draw back. Then the other kind of person, when everything's going good, they draw back. They don't need God. But then let a crisis come in their life and they run to God. Yeah. 
But a moment he stands up and calms the sea, yeah. Yeah. That's right. they draw back again. Oh, good preaching, Pastor. Yeah. Come on, church, are you here? Yeah. Do you think that's the kind of faith God wants? Is that the faith that overcomes the world? He said, if any man draws back, my soul, my spirit is not pleased with him. Because how many of you know we can't draw back? How many of you know we should always be close to God going through the crises and in the victory as well? Amen. Come on, church. Amen. We cannot live by our emotions and our feelings because when we do, we're not fulfilling the word of God and we're not pleasing God. And really, I mean, I'm not going to be able to even get to all of that this morning, but it's so true. What we're really saying is the circumstances is bigger than our God. And is the circumstances really bigger than God? Come on, church. No. Or is God bigger than any problem, any situation? Can I do all things through Christ who strengthens me? Do we really believe that? If we believe that, then don't draw back. Stay close to God whether you're going through hell. Just don't camp out there. And maybe if you're feeling like heaven on earth, don't stop there. Stay close to God too. It doesn't matter what's going on in your life. What God wants is our closeness to not draw back from him. Good preaching, pastor. Hallelujah. I'm about ready to shout myself. Preach it, preach it, brother. Hallelujah. <laughs> Um, but we've got to understand that, because I am excited about because faith has helped me walk out in this life what I've needed to walk through. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, without it, I couldn't make it. That's right. Because if I can only go by what I see, how many of you know there isn't a lot of victory always in that? No. Yes, there's good times when you see things and there's difficult times. <laughs> it rains on the just and it rains on the unjust. Yeah. Come on. The sun shines on the just and the sun shines on the unjust. It isn't about whether the sun is shining, everything's going good, or things are going bad. It's that God's greater than any situation. And when we begin to believe that, we really understand that we can't draw back. Because if we draw back, the victory is not in us because that's our faith. And then God can see faith. How many of you know sometimes we can't see faith? It's the evidence of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. How many of you know with our visible eyes, we can't see it, but evidently Jesus saw faith. Because this is what it tells us. And it says here in, Matthew, in Mark 2, 5, the beginning of that scripture said, and when he saw their faith. How many of you know Jesus can see your faith right now? Amen. But you know, if you have faith, that's a good thing. The only problem is if you don't have faith. Because when Jesus sees faith, something happened every time. Every time he said, I saw their faith, things begin to happen. Yeah. Amen. Maybe if something isn't happening in your life the way it needs to happen, maybe you're not, maybe Jesus can't see the faith he needs to see. Right. Question mark. Because look what, let me just give you a few things. Things change when Jesus sees faith. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the uh, paraplegic, Son, your sins are forgiven you. The very first thing that faith has the power to do is to forgive sin. That's why I think it's impossible to please God without it. He said when he saw their faith, he said to that man that was sick, your sins are forgiven you. When he sees faith, forgiveness is on its way. Somebody ought to shout right there. Does anybody need forgiveness in here? I mean, he said, and when he saw their faith, they, he forgave the sin. He didn't stop there. When he saw faith, salvation was on the scene. In Luke 7, 50, he said, and he said to the woman, your faith has saved you. For by grace you have been saved through faith. Yes. It isn't just grace. It's also faith. That's right. It isn't just salvation. It's also believing that God is and that God is a rewarder of those who believe in Him. Amen. Do you believe God came to reward you or curse you? Some of the stuff people talk about is amazing to me. I've had people say, well, God put this cancer on me to humble me. God didn't do that. No way. 
You have an adversary, the devil, yes. that goes around like a roaring lion. That is a curse of all things that we see. Quit blaming God for what the enemy tries to do. We've got to understand the real power of this is salvation and the anointing. When God saw faith, he heals. In Luke 17, 19, and he said to him, arise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. When faith is on the scene, numbers of things begin to happen. But when faith isn't on the scene, it can't happen. Are you getting anything out of this this morning? When faith is on the scene, it fights fear. For I have not given you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. The word tells us that, that faith will fight fear. In fact, if you are going to fight hate and anger, how many of you know in the spiritual realm, you've got to fight everything with the opposite? A lot of people have never understood that in their life. I was taught this years ago, 30 years ago, that if you are going to fight hate, you are going to have to fight it with love. If you're going to fight fear, you're going to have to fight it with the power of faith. If you're going to fight weakness, you're going to have to fight it with the power of not your strength, but God's strength in you. You have to fight spiritual things with spiritual things. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal through God, but are mighty in Him. For the pulling down of strongholds, bringing into captivity every thought. In other words, we, when, when a thought tries to come in of anger, you have to fight it with the love and power of God. When the thought comes in of unbelief, you've got to fight it with believing in God. When, the, when your doubt and lack, how many of you know you've got to believe that God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him? Amen. So, I mean, if you're going to fight this, you've got to fight fear with faith. Yes. When fear tries to grip you in the middle of the night or over a circumstance to say, I believe in God. He is a rewarder. They are covered and I believe that God can see my faith right now and he is going to move. That's right. Amen. Because every time he saw faith, study it for yourself hundreds of times in the New Testament. When they saw faith, something was on the scene. Something happened. It made in the, na in the spiritual, when he saw faith, something happened in the natural. And so that's so, to me, that's so powerful. I mean, I could go on and on. Faith stops fiery darts. Right. Ephesians 6 says, Above all, take up the shield of faith, where which you may quench all the fiery darts. Do you see why it's impossible to please God? I mean, I, I just give you just a small list of what happened when he saw faith. When he saw faith, supernatural things begin to, everybody say faith. faith. Say it out loud, faith. faith. I mean, when God sees our faith, things happen in the natural. Yep. Yes. But that means if God doesn't see our faith, nothing happens. That's right. <laughs> I mean, if, you know, maybe you ought to check your faith walk. If you're feeling down and fearful and Believing that God's not big enough. How many of you know, maybe you need to check your faith walk. Because I want to tell you, it's your faith that's going to make the difference. It's the power of faith that brings it forth. It stops fiery darts. Above all, take on the shield of faith. How many of you know, lastly, and well, not lastly, I'm just going to give you these last two really quickly. Faith is a choice. God put it in us, but we have to choose to live by it. And no one can take your faith from you, not even the enemy. Right. It's like saying somebody can take your salvation. The word said, can man take you? Can, can man rob you? Can anything take you out of my hand? No, but you can jump out of his hand. Faith is a choice. According to the word, Matthew 9 says this, And he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, let it be done to you. According to your faith, let it be done to you. How many of you know he didn't say, according to the pastor's faith, let it be done to you. No. He didn't say, according to my faith, let it be done to you. No, he made it a responsibility, a choice on us. Yeah. Amen. Right. He said, according to your faith, 
let it be done unto you. So let me ask you, if you don't like something that's happening to you right now, how about making a choice this morning? Choose you this day who you will serve. Come on, church. Everybody say, faith, faith. Is, a is a choice. I mean, we have to understand. It also says in, the, in verse 15 of that same book, Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be done to you as you desire. Is anybody going to say something in here? Hallelujah. <laughs> and her daughter was healed for that very hour. How many of you know that he didn't say, well, I'm the son of God. I could heal. I have the power. He said, no. What's your desire? Though I am the son of God, your faith has to move. Though I am the son of God, you have to choose. You have to take the step out of the boat. Though I can hold you up with my right hand, you have to make the choice. How many of you know, that's the one thing, you know, God loved us so much that he never made us mindless zombies. Some people think Christianity is being a mindless zombie. Christianity is not. God has left us with choice. God has left us by saying, you choose, you speak the words. You allow the anointing of God in your life. You live by faith. And you'll see my miracles in your life. You make a choice as you desire in your heart. As it is according to your faith, let it be done to you. You know, to me that's exciting. Some people will say, well, why didn't you just do it for me? Because... You have to understand that you have to fight for the good fight of faith. That's right. Amen. Which is something I really jumped right over, but for the sake of time, how many, let me just read it to you, because how many of you know that you have to fight for faith? If you don't fight for faith, it isn't going to just stay there. The word says that you have to understand that to fight for faith it's a battle to live by faith. I mean, what do you say? What can you really say openly? Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In other words, really, 1 Timothy 6.12 says basically, fight the good fight of faith. You've got to fight to believe in God today. People say, well, being a Christian, you know, oh, that's for all the weaklings. Let me tell you, it ain't for the weaklings or faint at heart today. You better know why you believe what you believe because the world is trying to knock the Christianity right out of you. It breaks my heart, really. But you're going to have to fight for your faith. And then let me close with this thought. When our faith is not working, it tells the enemy... We think he's bigger than our God we serve. When our faith is not working, what we're really saying to the enemy that's looking on our life is, you're bigger than the God I serve. The circumstance, the healing, the, the sickness is bigger than God that healed sickness and bore the stripes for our healing. When the circumstances, and, and we buckle under the circumstances, we're saying to the enemy, you're greater than the God that I serve. Why do I say that? Because 1 Corinthians says this, that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. That your faith should not be in the wisdom of what you can learn. As, as much as I love learning and, and higher education and, and being developed in life, how many of you know my faith cannot be developed in the wisdom of man? Right. 
My faith can only be developed in the power of God. And when I walk in the power of God, then my faith is seen and God can do miracles. When I choose to say, I won't go by the circumstances. I said, I won't go by the circumstances. But I'll go by the power of God. How many of you know he doesn't even stop there? James says, but let him ask in faith without doubting, with no doubt. Well, if you're asking, quit doubting then. Because when we doubt, we tell the enemy he's in charge instead of God. And he goes on to say, for he who doubts is like the waves of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. What's he really saying? <clears throat> he's telling us that when we doubt in our faith, that we're, we can sing the love song, we can raise our hands, but we're saying he's not big enough. And I, I don't mean to be so blunt or I'm not trying to be cruel, but church, do you know how many people I see waver in their walk with God? When all it takes is little faith as a mustard seed to say to the mountain, be thou removed. Amen. I mean, I would like us all to have great faith, but I know one thing, everybody in here has little faith. Amen. If you know Jesus, you have faith in you already. Amen. But you have to say to the mountain, and you cannot doubt, and you must believe that he is a rewarder, and you must desire for it to happen unto you.